This video is about building more intelligent machines. I'm going to be looking at the Jetson Nano, the Raspberry Pi 4, the Robotis Turtlebot 3, which runs ROS and does mapping and navigation using a laser sensor. And I'm going to be talking about how I can build this technology into my projects in the future so that I can make robots which can navigate and actually do useful things. So most of the robots I build use a microcontroller, which is just programmed with a USB cable off a PC and it does one task when it's booted up. Normally I'm using Arduinos or I'm using the Teensy, which is programmed like an Arduino. And that's been fine for now for basic motion control and hardware control. But the Nvidia Jetson Nano and the Raspberry Pi 4, of course, are actual computers with an operating system. And that allows us to do much more intelligent stuff like machine vision, processing, mapping, getting all that sensor data in, and also using ROS, which allows us to use pre-built modules to make intelligent machines. This video isn't sponsored but this is just a quick ad for ways you can support the channel and that really makes all the difference to the projects. I have Patreon and YouTube channel membership and those links are in the description below and patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early which all being well means they've probably got next week's video already and also sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. I have a merchandise store where you can get t-shirts, bags, socks, stickers and various other things with pictures of things on I've made over the years and there's also some affiliate links in the description and if you use one of those links to sign up or buy something it won't cost you any more but I'll get some money. Alright, let's have a look at the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. This is the NVIDIA Jetson Nano developer kit. The Jetson Nano itself is just this piece here which plugs into a socket. You can buy these separately to build into your own projects, but the developer kit comes with a breakout board which of course allows you to plug it into HDMI, USB and Ethernet so you can actually see what you're doing. It also has a 40 pin GPIO header which I understand to be the same pinouts as the Raspberry Pi and it also has two connectors on the other side which you can plug a Raspberry Pi camera into so they've done quite well on hardware compatibility. Now I've built my Jetson Nano into this little terminal looking thing with a couple of 3D prints and so my Jetson Nano is at the back there. We've got a battery and a voltmeter and a regulator so we can power it. And I got this screen off eBay which is an 11 inch screen and I'm using a USB keyboard and mouse. These are actually the Raspberry Pi official keyboard and mouse out of the Raspberry Pi desktop set that we'll have a look at in a bit. But yes, it's an actual computer. It boots Ubuntu 1804. There's an SD image you flash. I've put a Wi-Fi dongle in mine so it's actually truly portable now with the battery and the screen. So it's a bit like having a mobile computer. And of course it runs Linux so we've got a browser and everything else we need. Now it's about the same spec as a Raspberry Pi 4. The Raspberry Pi 4 came out since the Jetson nano but since then nvidia have launched the xavier nx which is much much more powerful than the jetson nano it's quite expensive as well but it is basically a mini supercomputer and the reason to buy jetson nano is basically the entry point to look at nvidia's deep learning models and all the other stuff that they've published so that you can get a grip on it before you buy something more expensive. So we can have a look at a bit of code to do some vision recognition using a deep learning model that's already provided as part of the framework for the Jetson series. The setup for the Jetson Nano is pretty well documented on the NVIDIA website up to getting the operating system on and I followed the first tutorial which is about doing a vision recognition example in less than 10 lines of code and that's using a pre-trained deep learning model that's already been trained on millions of images by NVIDIA. There's also a project page which has got lots of other stuff on including actually tracking a person's skeleton and that's using just a camera feed not using a depth camera like a Kinect but actually just a single monocular camera feed and another the deep learning model that's been trained to recognize how a human is posed. So I'm going to be just using a USB webcam. I've just got a Logitech webcam that we're going to plug into the USB port. We're going to run that 10 line of code example and see what we get out of it. So first of all you'll notice I've got significantly more than 10 lines of code. This is the 10 lines of code example but I've just botched an extra piece on the end here which is just an if statement and it looks for a class index of one which is a human and it just types out to the terminal that it's a human and the coordinates. So basically I could put these things in my own variables and use them in my own code, send them out by serial or OSC to control one of my own robots. So let's just go and run the example there. And we should find it takes a little while to launch. And then we should see, hopefully, that it detects a human, which is quite good. And you'll notice it detects me even if I'm obscured. So if I go slightly out of the shot, at some point it knows I'm a human again. So that works pretty well. It doesn't need to see the whole of a human, it just needs to see a piece of a human. And it pretty much knows I'm a person. But it detects lots of other objects, which is really useful as well for robots and perception. So it's already trained on lots of household objects. So if I now come and turn the camera around, 
Look at the keyboard and mouse. Yep, it knows that's a keyboard. The white mouse isn't too good because it's white on white, but the darker color mouse, it knows is a mouse. What else have we got? Yep, a cell phone and a cup. And you'll notice as soon as it sees a cup, it thinks the table's a dining table. And I guess that's because of the deep learning model that's used to cups being on dining tables. Let's just take the cup away. Yep, now it occasionally thinks the table is a bed with a cell phone on it. And if I put the cup back, it says it's the dining table, which would make much more sense. So that's just an example of how the deep learning models work. And I made this into a mobile computer for a reason. So if I go and put it in the kitchen, we can see that it recognizes all the common objects like the refrigerator and the oven. It also recognizes most furniture like chairs and tables. And in fact, you can look at the categories that this code will give you. There's 91 different categories it will recognize. And the overall image set has been trained on millions of images in around a thousand categories, different breeds of dog and so on. And you can retrain that fairly quickly using transfer learning so that you can recognize, for instance, only cats or dogs, or build up your own conditions for recognition. But this is of course quite useful. You can imagine just putting this into a mobile robot and it immediately having perception for a single camera of the objects around it, normal household objects and animals and people. So the next thing I'm going to demonstrate is the TurtleBot 3 from Robotis, and Robotis make Dynamixel servos, and this is basically a reference design robot for learning ROS, which is a really important robot platform for robot coding, which I've been learning about. So we're going to do a demo first, and then I'll talk some more about ROS. But first of all, the TurtleBot is basically a little robot. It's got two Dynamixel servos that allow it to drive around on its wheels on a caster. It's got an open CR board in, which is basically an Arduino compatible microcontroller board with an ARM Cortex M7 on. It also has the interfaces for the Dynamixel servos and various other things. And it has a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus in it, which is where ROS actually runs on top of the Raspberry Pi operating system. This one's also got a laser scanner on the top, which is basically used for mapping the environment. And this one, I've also installed a Raspberry Pi camera on. It's the version two camera because I wanted to tinker around with it, but that's not stock. So first of all, we're gonna do a little demo of what we can do with it. And then we'll talk more about what ROS is. I'm just driving the robot around remotely here using a keyboard teleoperation program. And that's running remotely over the network on my laptop. So we're just gonna drive the robot around. And then we're running something called G mapping, which is actually drawing a map of the robot surroundings. And it's doing that by using the laser scan data and also the wheel odometry that tells it the pose of the robot. And that means how far it's gone forward and how far it's rotating. And it uses that data combined to position the robot, locate it, and basically draw a map of everything in the downstairs of my house. So we'll just speed that up a bit. We'll go out into the hallway and we should find that it completes the map. And now we've got the map, we can tell it to navigate. So I can use the GUI to put down a big green arrow. It turns red when I let go. And then the robot should plan a path and we should see a wiggly line there of the path the robot's gonna take from the kitchen all the way through the doorway and out into the hallway. And you can see the red arrow is now pointing the other way. So when it gets there, it should adjust its pose as accurately as it can. And it should turn around to face the other way. And you can see on the map, there's a sort of green fog following the robot. Those are actually lots of little arrows, and that's basically every possible pose it could be in, and it's solving where it actually is as it goes to get the best estimate. Here we go, so it should turn around and face the other way. And now let's have a shorter one towards the bottom of the stairs, and again the arrow is pointing the other way, so when it gets there it should turn around and face the other way. So that seems to be working okay. Now let's plan a path all the way back into the kitchen and again we'll have it face us when it gets there. It seems to plan the path pretty well okay. Obviously it just drew the map and it knows where it is and it's constantly relocating itself as it goes to get the best estimate. So not too much trouble actually planning that path and adjusting its pose to the right position when it gets there. That's quite useful if it had to have a manipulator on say which would then do something when it got there. So now we're going to try and confuse the robot by adding something that's not on the map. I'm going to plan a path into the doorway and then put an obstacle in the way. And of course that has to be high enough it can be seen by the laser scanner. And you can see there it dynamically adjusts the path. You can see that block is now on the laser scan. 
and it should complete its path, avoiding the obstacle into the doorway. So for the next example, we're going to try moving the obstacle while the path's already being planned, and we should see it dynamically drives past it. You'll also see me on the laser scan, so it can deal with temporary objects, and of course those disappear when they go out of range. So we should see the robot deals with that quite well, and goes and meets its target. That's pretty basic ROS functionality out of the box when you build a TurtleBot or you build a basic ROS robot, but the TurtleBot itself is totally reliant on ROS for all of its functionality. As I said at the beginning, really, this is a ROS training robot to get to grips with ROS, and the barrier to entry seems quite high. I've been doing various other reading and various other training, but having the TurtleBot and actually being able to build it's been quite useful. ROS itself is open source, and I think really the best way to learn ROS is probably to build a robot with ROS on it and try and implement everything from scratch. So the next task for me is to try and build my own robot hardware instead of using the TurtleBot and try and get the same functionality up and running and then use ROS in future projects. Ultimately though, ROS is a development framework for robotics development. Most of the functionality is built around a system of nodes which can either run on the same computer or over the network. So in the TurtleBot example, I'm running the nodes that control the wheels, robot odometry, and the laser scanner data on the Raspberry Pi in the robot, and I'm running Arviz, the ROS GUI, and also the mapping and navigation modules on my laptop. There are many, many other nodes that already exist. Various mapping and navigation systems, nodes that talk to various sensor hardware, and other nodes for completing robot tasks. Somewhere we need to have the ROS core running, in this case it's on my laptop, and that's a bit like a directory that nodes register with so they can discover and talk directly to each other. The TurtleBot has really good instructions for getting ROS installed and up and running, and these are free to read on the Robotis website. And Robotis have also published a free book in PDF format which is all about the concepts of ROS and ROS programming. I've been learning about ROS from an online course at Robot Ignite Academy. It costs money, but it does have a full simulation suite and runs completely in a web browser. However, the best way to get to grips with ROS, as I say, is to build your own robot, and that's going to be the next plan. So ROS generally, the nodes have to run on a computer, like a Ubuntu machine or a Raspberry Pi or the Jetson Nano, but you can actually run ROS nodes, kind of, on an Arduino, provided it uses the ROS library and it's connected to a computer running the ROS serial node. So let's have a look at that next. Let's get the Raspberry Pi out on an Arduino and see if we can make that work. So I've got the Raspberry Pi 4 desktop kit and that comes with the official Raspberry Pi keyboard and mouse, the Raspberry Pi 4 in a lovely little case. It comes with a 3 amp power supply suitable for powering it. It comes with two micro HDMI cables. There's actually two HDMIs out on the Raspberry Pi 4. And it also comes with the Raspberry Pi beginner's guide that has all sorts of information in here about programming in various languages and doing electronics and interfacing. And I've also got, additionally, the Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen, which we're going to have a look at right now. So here is the touchscreen out of its box, which looks very nice. On the back there's a board, which actually has an HDMI socket, but it's got these mounting posts here to put the Raspberry Pi 4 on, which I've now taken out of its case. It does have a connector here, which we can connect directly, and that cable is provided for the display, and there's some other wires in the bag which I believe are for power and I squared C so that the mouse interface, the touch interface, will work on the Raspberry Pi. So we'll get that mounted and we'll boot it up. So I've installed the Raspberry Pi and the associated cables and I've just precariously balanced it on the back there. But this seems to be working okay, it's quite a crisp and clear display and I can move the mouse pointer by using the touch screen. So if I click on something, you know, we can open up all of the programs and so on, which is quite useful. Now I've got Ubuntu Mate running on here, even though it's a Raspberry Pi 4 and there isn't an SD image. And I'll put a link in the description about how you can install actual Ubuntu on a Raspberry Pi 4. So I've plugged back in the keyboard and mouse so I can actually type, and I've also plugged in an Arduino Uno. And the Arduino Uno's got some example code running on it, which comes with the ROS library, and that enables us to talk to a simple switch. Now on another machine, I'm actually running the ROS Core, and this is a Ubuntu desktop machine, and on that one we're going to have a look at the topic that's published by the Arduino code, 
and that's talking to the ROS serial node, which is running on the Raspberry Pi. So if we now look at what ROS topics are published, we should see we've got one called pushed, as well as the other standard ones that get published when you start the core up. And a topic is basically a pipe that connects the nodes together and over the nodes go messages. So if we now echo that node called pushed, we should be to see the messages that go over it. And we can see that as we click the switch, we should get a Boolean of true or false. And this is just a really basic example but it shows that we've got basically a node running on the Arduino talking to the Raspberry Pi and over the network we can view that data on another machine all using ROS as the framework. And my plan for a Raspberry Pi 4 on the touchscreen is to build a robot remote with a GUI interface that I can write in Python talking to a ROS node to control the robot. So basically I'm going to use two of these three axis joysticks that I use in a lot of other projects and build it into a nice case so that we can actually make a remote control and hopefully that'll eventually replace my current universal remote control that I use in all the projects which is just an Arduino and an NRF24 L01 so hopefully we can make all those robots ROS aware and use Wi-Fi to control them. Reading switch data isn't very exciting but it does go to show how we can interface to a robot hardware using an Arduino and get that data to and from ROS. So I built this robot a while ago which was the Nerf Blaster robot and this is pretty much an ideal candidate for being converted to a ROS robot, we just need to add a Raspberry Pi, it already has an Arduino which talks to the motors and it talks to wheel encoders and it also has a laser scanning range finder on it which is really similar to the one on the TurtleBot and that one already has a ROS node from the manufacturer so we can read that data straight into ROS. So it should be easy enough to make it be operated by a teleoperation program just receiving the command velocity topic and those messages to move the wheels and after that we just need to get the laser data back and the odometry data back and we should be to use G-mapping and we should be to use the navigation stack. Now we could also integrate the Jetson Nano deep learning models so that we could have it actually look for a webcam so it could go around its navigation path from point to point, perhaps on patrol, but then when it sees a specific category of object, we can make it do something, like shoot it with a Nerf blaster. So there's lots of possibilities there to immediately make a more intelligent robot. But I'm gonna be doing that hopefully in a new series coming up and showing all the steps to getting that working, provided I can actually achieve it. So don't forget to like and subscribe for more details on that project and lots of other projects. And if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description below. All right, that's all for now.